Wow, this was very unexpected. We'll be filing in a very little while. And to have this many people out here for this is great. We're lucky we have a nice day. Nice to have a nice day. Come on up here, everybody. Come on. Get my people up here. Don't worry about the press. Don't worry about the press. Come on up. Circle us. Circle us. Uh, any questions, please? Marco Rubio has a disaster on his finances. He has a disaster on his credit cards. When you check his credit cards, take a look at what he's done with the Republican Party when he had access, what he had to put back in, and whether or not something should have happened. You'll understand it. Marco Rubio has a basic disaster on finance. So let's see what you find. Let's see what kind of a reporter you are. Okay, good luck. It, it, won't, be, it won't be hard. It, it won't be hard. David, yeah, go ahead. Nice, easy question, David. Go ahead. I know David, I know David so well. Mr. Trump, last night we had a marijuana initiative go down in flames in Ohio. We had a, uh, an outsider conservative win the governor's chair in Kentucky, and we had a... Which they said was largely due to the Trump phenomenon. You saw that. No, they said it. They said it. On another network, they said it. Sheriff bounced out of his job in San Francisco. Yeah. Does this, do you take credit for this, or does this bode well for what you're Well, I will say a lot of good things are happening. Now, if you look at Ohio, and we have somebody running that happens to be from Ohio, even though I'm beating him in the polls, he had a total monopoly. They had one company with a total monopoly on marijuana and the profits. How dumb is that? And that's probably why it failed. But how dumb is that? One company had a monopoly on the whole thing, and they were going to make a fortune. And I think that's one of the reasons it failed. But uh, I was happy to see that. I think it was a good result. I loved what happened in Kentucky. And he's a good guy. And they gave me a lot of credit for that one. I don't deserve the credit. But there is something happening, folks, I will tell you. There is something happening. And we sent you, and we sent you those numbers. I sent you some nice numbers. Yeah, we'll report that later this afternoon. Well, you haven't read the polls in Iowa, obviously. I'm not surprised that question. Yesterday's poll came out, and I was two polls. I was, I'm now in top in Iowa, too. Uh, two polls, two polls came out, and now I'm leading Iowa again. So we're happy with it. I think we're going to do great in New Hampshire. I think New Hampshire. We had a, a tremendous poll a couple of days ago. It was 32 uh, percent versus. What was it, 12 or something? Yeah. Or we were way up in New Hampshire, so we're very happy with the New Hampshire. And, and you know what? I love the people of New Hampshire. They're just incredible people. When you get a crowd like this that I didn't really know about, this is... I came here to file because I feel you have to come here to file. And you have this many people show up on a morning. And most of these people are working. I know that. These are hard, as they say, these are hard workers. You're not allowed to use that expression. These are hard workers. Okay. I mean, when we get to a point where you can't use the term hard worker, this country is in big trouble, folks. I want to tell you. I'm a hard worker, I'll tell you. I work hard. Okay, any questions? Okay, let, let me explain. Let me explain something. Stupid, stupid question. Let me explain something. I am all for private property rights. There's nobody wants property taken away less than I do, believe me, because I would lose a lot of money if my property is taken away. But when you're building a road, when you're building a highway, when you're building whatever you, it is you're building from a municipal standpoint, you may need a corner of a piece of property. Now, 
We all agree the Keystone Pipeline, I mean, many people think we should approve it, thousands of jobs, et cetera, et cetera. I would make a better deal because I'd want a piece of it for the country. So, you know, they're going to approve it. We're bringing oil down from Canada. All fine, environmentally better than trucking it, et cetera, et cetera. Environmentally, it's better. But without eminent domain, you can't build the Keystone Pipeline. Almost every inch of that pipeline is eminent domain. And in fact, if you study the Keystone Pipeline, they have a clause that goes on for pages talking about eminent domain and how it's necessary and how it's So, without eminent domain, you won't have roads, you won't have highways, you won't have anything. Also, from an economic development standpoint, when you have a factory that is going to leave town and the town's doing badly, or you have a factory or plant or something that's coming into town, and everybody wants it. But you need a corner of a piece of property someplace. And by the way, just so you understand, and, and this is what nobody, these people get paid, and they get paid a tremendous amount of money. There are people that will buy farms and buy houses if there's a chance for eminent domain, because they make a fortune with it. So they get, in most cases, if they're smart, they get much more than their property's worth. But if you're going to create 10,000 jobs for a town that's in trouble and you need a piece of property, I'll tell you what, folks, I want to create jobs and I want to give the people that own that property more than it's worth. And that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. So, and, and the beauty is, and you, you folks all know this, Club for Growth, which is a third rate outfit, came to my office, asked me for a million dollars. I said, who are these people? I didn't even know who they are. I don't even know how the meeting got set up. They came to my office. The guy sitting there, within about two minutes, they asked me for a million dollars, and then they're stupid enough, they write me a letter asking me, you have it, right? Asking me for a million dollars. And I'm saying, why would I do that? We told them, no, thank you. I have better places to spend my money. I'd rather give it to you. I'd rather this Let's have a party. Yeah. So they ask me for a million dollars in a letter. I say no, and then they go hostile on me. So if I would have given them the million dollars, I guarantee you they would have loved me. Instead, they go around looking for money, looking for money. Eminent domain is an un... It's, it's really... It's, it, people don't understand it. They really don't. You can't have roads. You can't have highways. You can't do anything. And remember this, most of the people here in this group, most of them agree that the Keystone Pipeline is very important. The Keystone Pipeline could not be built for two feet without eminent domain. I don't love it, I don't like it, but it's a necessary thing for a country to go and do what they have to do. Okay, question. Big money has way too much well, that's, you know, I'm the only one that's not taking money. You do know that. Excuse me, do you know that I'm the only one that's not taking money? I'm the only one. I'm the only one. I agree with that. I am the only one. Super PACs are a disaster and they're a scam, okay? I had formed from people that I have no idea. We had 10 or 11 or 12. Everybody's forming a super PAC for Trump. We have sent everybody a couple of weeks ago letters we don't want their money, and some may be really well versed. I mean, they may be are going to do a good thing. Others may be they're saying, "Wow, they just found a million dollars. They're going to live very well." We don't want our super PAC. We don't want anybody to form super PACs for me. We sent legal notices. Please give all the money back. We don't want it. We don't want super PACs. If you look at Jeb, if you look at Marco Rubio, if you look at all of these people, they have super. And you look at Hillary. Let's go to the other side. They have. They have super PACs where they control the candidate just like you control a puppet. Every single, this man Singer that put up money, he's big on amnesty. He's big on illegal immigration, meaning leave it alone. Paul Singer, take a look at what he represents. And he represents other, be quiet. And he represents other things besides. Paul Singer, wait a minute. Paul Singer represents amnesty and he represents illegal immigration pouring into the country, and now he's with Rubio. Rubio was totally in favor of very, very lax rules. He was a member of the Gang of Eight. The Gang of Eight means, come on in, folks. Come on in. Come on into the country. Nobody's going to stop you. Now Rubio is surging in New Hampshire. 
I don't think so, folks. Wow. When you find out the truth about Rubio, you'll check his credit cards from Florida, and you're going to find out how does he feel about illegal immigration. And I will tell you, he's totally — now, he's since changed his mind a little bit. He's still weak on it, but he changed his mind. There's no way that plays in large parts of this country, especially in New Hampshire. All right. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Are you with the press? No. I'm oh, come on, man. <laughs> we love you. Are you with Trump? Yes. Okay, then I like you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Now, now, I'm, now, I'm take, now I'm taking questions from the audience. Go ahead. Give me a good Mr. question. Trump. A fair question. Come on. As appointed president, voted in, right. as Secretary of State, are we going to have another thing done that we've got fellow veterans? No, we're not. Come here. I like this question. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. I like this question now. He actually looked much better than the press, so I was a little bit surprised. You're going to be very happy. You'll be happy, believe me. And if you're a vet, you're I real. Vet. You know what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm taking care of the vets. You understand that. These other guys couldn't give a damn about the vets. So you want to be left behind. You're not going to be left behind. That I promise you. Jeb Bush says he's not a good talker. Why would he admit that? Why would he? Admit that? Why would, if he's not a good talker, and let's assume that's a fact, why would you say, I watched him, I'm not an entertainer. He goes, I'm not a good talker. Uh, I don't speak well. I don't debate well. I don't do anything well. But you should vote for me. That's Jeb Bush. Why would you say these things? This is what's going to negotiate with China? This is what's going to negotiate with Iran? He's still running? <laughs> <laughs> No, but Rubio's, Rubio's going down next. And I have to tell you something, folks. We need tough, great people with tremendous energies. We have to bring back our job. We have to bring back our country. We have to, we have to take our jobs back from China, Japan, Mexico, all these places that have them. And Ben Carson is not equipped to do that. That I can tell you. He is not equipped to do it. He doesn't have a chance of bringing back a single job. And if I'm elected, we'll have jobs so much. The biggest complaint I get all over is, Mr. Trump, we graduated from college, we can't get a job. Mr. Trump, I got laid off, I can't get a job. Mr. Trump, because of Obamacare, I'm a part-time employee. You know what they do, they hire part-time. A man worked for a, a company for 32 years as a full-time employee, they just made him part-time. And this is happening by the millions all over the country. People are becoming part-time employees. That's not going to happen with Trump. Thank you very much. We're going in.
you know what? I'm going to stand here just in case. I'm going to wait because he made it. Oh, I have two clips off of my stand. Someone's laugh. number of years. But if you look at Marco Rubio, not only with the credit cards, which is a catastrophe, I think, for him, but if you look at how weak he is with illegal immigration, he is like, everybody come in, everybody come in. The people of New Hampshire will not stand for that, in my opinion. No, I can, I'm not concerned about it. I think he's an absolute light Paul said he's had some issues. Do you support a trillion dollars? Remember this, the other side spending less. You better be careful. Hi, Bill. Wow. That's some turnout, huh? Sign the paper on the desk. This is 